Can I call for the sedent and the intimation all apologies, please, one. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, members. As a reminder, today's um, proceedings will be recorded and will be subject to delayed broadcast on the Council's website. In terms of the sedent, Councillor Roberts. Yep, here. Councillor Jenkins. Councillor Friel. Yes, and I'm here, thank you. Councillor McFadgen. Good morning, I'm here. Councillor Mackay. Councillor Cook. Yes, here, Lynn. Councillor Maitland. Councillor Todd. Councillor Mayor. Yep. We have an apology this morning from Councillor McGee. Councillor Crawford. Yeah. We also have an apology this morning from Councillor Bell. Councillor Filson. I'll call again for Councillor Jenkins. Councillor Mackay. Councillor Maitland. Councillor Todd. And Councillor Filson. Thank you, Chair. I can confirm we are quoted. OK, thanks very much, Lynn. OK, members at this point, the uh, declarations of interest. Any declaration of interest that you may have in relation to any of the applications, can you declare that a uh, declaration of interest at this moment in time and expand on what the nature of that interest is, please? Any declarations? Nope, I'm not seeing any, any hands. OK. okay. Um, next item is the hearing procedure. It's there on pages three and four. Lynn, can you give a summary, please? Thank you, Chair. The hearing will begin with the head of with the Chief Governance Officer or his representative giving an overview of the application. The objectors will then present their objections to the committee, and members will have the opportunity to ask questions on the submissions made. Members, please note that this is not to be taken as an opportunity to comment on the merits or otherwise of the planning application. Applicant and or the agent will speak in support of the application and members will have the opportunity to ask questions. Again, members, please note that this is not to be taken as an opportunity to comment on the merits or otherwise of the planning application. At this stage, the hearing will then close. Officers um, today will give appropriate clarification on any matters which have been raised during the hearing and members will then move to determination. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for that, Lynn. OK, on to business proper. The first one is planning application number 210767PP. New roof over existing shop and direction of two commercial buildings at 91 Hill Street, Kilmarnock East Ayrshire, KA31JL, pages 5 through 30 on your documents. Okay, Fiona. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much, Chair. The purpose of this report is to present for determination an application for planning permission to be considered by the planning committee under the scheme of delegation because it is subject to more than 10 separate objections, notwithstanding that it is a local development. The application is not significantly contrary to the local development plan and the appropriate route of determination is, per pla is through planning committee. The application site is relatively central within Kilmarnock. The area surrounding the shop currently is predominantly residential with the existing shop unit serving a small scale convenience store to meet the day to day needs of the residential neighbourhood. There is a funeral, detectors, funeral director's premises currently opposite the site and also a site that appears to store caravans, which is largely screened by residential property. Ayrshire Central Mosque is located south of the site with the Halo development and Ayrshire College beyond towards the town centre. A further local convenience store is located approximately 400 metres north of the site on Comores Road at the primary school. The application site is located out with Town Centre Boundary for Kilmarnock, as defined in the local development plan, with the nearest point of the boundary as shown on the Kilmarnock settlement map, some 640 metres south of the site. The proposed development aims to gain consent for the re-roofing of the existing shop unit and the erection of two additional units, one to the north and one to the south of the existing unit. 
Further information is at paragraph 9 on page 6 of your papers. If members can bear with me, I'll do a share tree and just show you some slides. OK, hopefully everyone can see that. I'll just use the cursor to try and show you around a bit. See the red circle here, members? That just shows you the area of the site that the site's within. And the site is the little red square just in the centre of that circle there. You'll see the roundabout to the north, which is the roundabout going north towards Comores and Stewarton. And you'll see the western road going to the left and right of that roundabout. If you come further south, that takes you into the town centre of Comarnock here within the one way system. OK, here we have a location plan that's been submitted by the applicant. You'll see the existing shop unit here, members, with the red line site down there. You'll see residential properties around here and here. The funeral directors um, is over this way, and you'll see residential properties here, members, as well. This is just another plan showing you the, the general location. You can see in this area, you've got the roundabout here that I was referring to earlier, members, as well. OK, so here we have the block plan showing um, the extended details members and we have the unit one, unit two and the existing unit in here. And there you'll see members the um, elevation detail in a, in a kind of illustration for you there. Um, we have the uh, Kilmarnock Local Development Plan boundary for you members. The sites within here, it's identified as white land. And you'll see down here we have the conservation area in the town centre of John Finney Street and the, the town centre boundary, which is just at the very edge where my cursor is um, round about here. Photographs for you now, members, just to show you the general area. I'll keep going. Uh, this is Hill Street to the front here, members. Uh, you'll see the funeral directors just over there in residential properties. But that's just the side onto Stafford Street members at the very side of the unit where one of the units would be built onto. You can see it's currently used for parking. Again, just a slightly different perspective of that side of the unit. You can see the existing unit here. Again, just the side of the unit. Again, members onto Stafford Street at the side. That's the front there of the unit facing onto Hill Street. Members, that's Hill Street there. Looking towards um, the north to the roundabout with Western Road. Uh, there's the area of um, open space that's referred to members in the um, documentation, and that's where one of the other units, the other unit would be built onto, to that side. You can just see the junction there with the residential estate that this takes you in. I think members in my other presentation there when I was talking about Stafford Street, I've got the sites the wrong way around, the street names the wrong way around. This is actually um, Stafford Street, I think, this side. Just some more pictures for you members to show you the layout. That's looking back towards the town centre uh, where the, the residential properties at which road are being built at the moment. And then if you go further on, you'll get to the Halo development, the Kilmarnock College and further down towards the town centre. This is the residential estate opposite. OK, so turning back to the report, the consultation process is detailed in your report. Uh, can advise that ARA, in terms of roads and flooding, are not objecting, and environmental health and Scottish water have no objections to. In terms of representations, we have 33 letters of objection. We don't have any letters of support. The objection letters are summarised, starting at paragraph 19 on page 9, including concerns such as land ownership matters, service of neighbour notification, shops neither being wanted or needed, concerns with road congestion, parking, pedestrian safety, empty units in the town centre where the site would be better located and the proposal conflicting with the town centre strategy and the, the council's commitment to the town centre. There are already shops in the local area and queries regarding proposed uses. All points are responded to in the report and obviously I would advise members that land ownership and evaluation of property are not material planning considerations. Section 25 and 37 two of the Town and Country Planning Scotland Act as amended requires that planning applications be determined in accordance with the development plan unless material considerations indicate otherwise. For the purpose of this application, the, app, the development plan, relevant part of the development plan is the adopted East Ayrshire Local Development Plan of 2017. And that contains the relevant policies to the application. 
Proposed development is out with Kilmarnock Town Centre. Most of the plans state that the new units will be used for mixed use like commercial properties. The agent has confirmed that unit one is proposed as a hairdresser's or a pharmacy and unit two would be a barber's. Under the Town and Country Planning Use Classes order, both units would fall within class one shops. Proposed units are therefore considered to be footfall generating uses under table four of the local development plan and should be directed to the town centre location. In this instance, there's no sequential test or other supporting statement provided to justify the development in this location, and it's not been conclusively shown that there are no vacant units, alternative vacant units of size and style available in the town centre that could accommodate the proposal. The development also uses an area of small, small area of open space to the north of the existing unit, and this open space, whilst not safeguarded in the local development plan, is enclosed by a hybrid wall and railings with gated access. Whilst the open space is not large and is not used for recreational purposes, it does form a, gate, a gateway feature into Stafford Street residential estate. Development of this open space has the potential to detrimentally affect the character and appearance of the residential estate by removing a portion of the open space from the streetscape. Whilst the size and scale of the re-roofing of the existing unit is relatively minor and on its own would likely to be acceptable, as the proposal includes the development of the two additional units, the proposal is required to show compliance with CE at TC2 or TC and TC3, which has failed to do so. The representations raise some valid material considerations, which overall would support refusal of the application as detailed in the report. Therefore, we would recommend refusal of the application for the reasons stated in Appendix 1 of your report, on starting at page 27 of your papers, as the application is contrary to policies Res 11, TC2 and TC3, and as a consequence is contrary to overarching policy OP1, subsections 1, 2 and 8 of the East Ayrshire Local Development Plan. Having considered all the relevant matters, such as material considerations highlighted in the report, including the tilted balance requirements set out in SPP, there are none that would warrant refuse approval of the application to outweigh the provisions of the development plan. Back to you, Chair. Okay, thanks very much for that, Fiona. Uh, members, we do have a hearing this morning. We've got two objectors wishing to speak. Um, we have Mr. Graham Wallace. Graham, um, would you like to come forward? And Robert will show you where you can your representation from. Okay, members, I'm proposing uh, five minutes for Graham. Is that okay? Okay, good morning, Graham. Thanks morning. for coming this morning. morning. Uh, you've got five minutes. Okay. Okay, in view of the plan application, with the premises where they are at present located between three junctions, Stafford Street, Rosebank Place, Montgomery Place, Parking is only going to create more problems. I know from daily experience that exiting Stafford Street onto Hill Street is an absolute nightmare. Traffic was already unsighted to the right because of the bus shelter and parked cars, and now cars parked outside the shop as it is block the view of traffic heading up Hill Street. And this, this is a picture at various times throughout the day. Looking at the plan changes, I don't see anything changing. Changing here, it's only going to get worse. The problem is only going to be worsened by any alterations to parking at the front of the premises. For loading bays, read parking bays, unless the council are going to have a traffic traffic, traffic patrol up there controlling the area. I would also like to remind the planning department that the proposers have previously disregarded the department by erecting a roadside laundrette facility without planning permission being approved. Will they disregard anything you say again? I've lived in Stafford Street for over 30 years. The convenience store has been a fixture for all of those years and it served the community well and there is absolutely no need for more shops and the litter that they create. We were also very much in the dark as to what was going in the units, but that has been cleared today. It's a five minute bus journey or a 10 minute walk into the town centre. This is a nice residential area. Let's keep it that way. Thank you. OK, thanks very much for that, Graham. Members, do you have any questions for Graham in regard to his presentation to you this morning? Nope, I think that's you, Graham. Thanks very much. Um, we have got Ms. Caroline, Caroline Handy. <laughs> Me included. OK, good morning. Uh, Caroline. Caroline. Good morning, Caroline. Thanks for coming. And members, I'm proposing five minutes for Caroline. No need that. Okay. Just, um, I have lived in this estate since I was five. I moved from number 10 to number one. I've been raised in that estate. I've raised my children in that estate. And we're now being told that the area next to my house has never been used for recreational use. 
we lost a substantial amount of green space for the development that went on that used to be the old Campbellton Drive. So a lot of the area that children played in was removed from us. And now they're proposing that, again, I'm going to lose half of the ground next to my house. My children playing that. The kids, the majority of the kids in the estate, they play football in there. At some point, I've debated putting my trampoline in there to give me a bit more space in my garden. My kids play in there with my dogs on a daily basis. And that's now going to be removed, something that's been maintained and used by the estate for 30 odd years. It's just, it, it, obviously, it's quite a sore point. Um, as for the shop, we have enough local amenities. We don't need anything else. Anything that's the elderly and infirm would need can be picked up in that shop. We're a close knit neighbourhood. With I've got the same neighbours. Everybody, everybody in that estate knows me because I've been there that long. If any of the neighbours need anything, we're all adept at nipping into town for each other if it was required. And there's again the other side of the roundabout. We've got a shop. There's fast food shops within walking distance, within five ten minutes walking distance. We've got how many apps online that you can order groceries, you can order whatever you need. We're seeing now that it's they're putting in a chemist. How, how what's that going to bring to us? There's a chemist around the corner. There's a chemist on Dean Street. It's not. It's just personally, I just think whatever the everything is in that proposal is not required. It's going to be detrimental to anybody in that estate that's raising young children, because again, we're losing area that they can play in, and it's a safe, gated space that children can play in over and above having their own gardens. Is again, it's a relatively new build. The gardens in there aren't the biggest. It's just, I'm kind of running out of things to say. It's just that we are looking at it from a parent's perspective, somebody that's lived in that estate all their days. It's just, it's, it's not going to bring anything. It's going to hamper the experience of young kids moving into that estate. But thank you for your time. OK, thanks very much, Carolyn. Members, do you have any questions for Carolyn? No, I'm not seeing anything. Thanks for coming, Carolyn. OK, um, we have the, the agent, Neil Rogers. Neil, members are proposing 10 minutes for Neil. Good morning, Neil. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Thank you. Neil Rogers, uh, acting for uh, clients. Um, I hear what the objectors are saying uh, with regards to the, uh, the open space, uh, provided the planning officer um, an extract from um, the ownership of the land uh, to show that um, a portion of the open space is actually owned by the client. Um, it's walled, um, the, there's a secure uh, gate actually in the place as well. So the use of um, the neighbours to use it as a space is technically you know, going on my client's ground. Um, but what the client originally tried to do was um, like, you know, give the building a facelift. And um, the original structure, uh, we looked at putting a new roof over the top of it and um, utilise the space either side to um, create something that would actually be in balance with the developments in and around the local area. Um, the structure has been there, as the objectors had said, for a um, good number of decades, and it needs a bit of TLC. The client was looking for this opportunity to actually enhance the space. Um, we had quite a considerable amount of dialogue between um, Asia Roads Alliance on uh, the parking arrangements and what they would actually deem as being acceptable, which we addressed and um, reduced the number of well, well, the, uh, the width of uh, the units, especially um, the unit to the south, um, which originally in the first application was uh, two units and we were taking over a substantial part of the original car park. We've reduced that down to like basically provide one unit. Um, my client has a potential end user for a pharmacy um, to utilise the, the new health centre. Um, and on the northern side, um, a barber's, um, which would then you know, complement the rest of that facade. Um, the materials that we're looking at doing, again, trying to actually keep it um, 
like aesthetic and consideration to what's actually been put forward for the rest of the Hill Street. Um, and really the client isn't wanting to rock any boats, really hoping to try and actually enhance the area. Um, you've got across the roads um, a two point, well, over two metre high um, timber fence delineating um, some like, you know, a commercial property. Um, you have again as well the funeral directors across the road again as well, um, which aesthetically isn't as pleasing as what we are actually trying to propose. Um, so in, in, in that light, the proposals that we're putting forward would be advantageous for the rest of the, I mean, if we kept it just the way it is, then um, obviously it's going to be a bit of an eyesore in comparison to what's actually been proposed for the, the rest of Hill Street. Okay, Neil. Members, do you have any questions for Neil in regard to his presentation on behalf of the applicant? Oh. Councillor Cook, Tom. Thank, thanks, Chair. I think it was touched on there briefly about uh, the pharmacy. Just wondering, has, has your client actually been in consultation with NHS and have permission for opening a new pharmacy? No, it's in, it, it would be uh, based upon like whether or not it would be, a, you know, achieve planning approval for it first before that dialogue was uh, carried further. Okay, no, thank you for putting that up. Okay, Neil, a couple of, couple of questions from me. Um, in paragraph 23, um, the mention of the sequential test has been mentioned. Can you tell us why you didn't do any sequential test? Because in paragraph 23, uh, page 14, just below halfway down the page, as detailed above, no supporting statement, sequential tests have been provided to show alternative units have been considered or to show there is lack of units of this size and type within the town centre. As there has been no supporting details provided, it can be determined that the development will not adversely impact upon the vitality and viability of the town centre. So we're back to the sequential test. Well, um, clients don't own any of the other. The clients don't. Clients don't own any of the um, like you know properties other than the area that they've got here to develop. Um, there's um, again walking distance from the town centre um, and other local amenities. Um, the the need for like taking that test. Um, wasn't entertained by the client. Okay, um, so you're effectively saying, in your opinion, there's no need for the sequential test to be carried out. Well, would that be fair client, to say? Yes, client owns that piece of land, so is looking to try and actually develop it, um, okay. as opposed to looking at other potential properties. I'll maybe get the want. client officer to address that in, in regard to summing up in regard to the relevance of that. Okay, Neil, uh, I don't have any further questions. Members? Um, me Councillor Mayor, George? Thanks, Chair. I was just wondering about the the piece of ground that the, the kids play on, etc. Uh, can you tell us if your client maintained that ground or did someone else cut the grass, etc.? I believe it's actually the council that cut the grass. It's actually, can I interject, yeah. sorry? And um, when the estate was built, there was an Sorry, yeah, you, you can't come in. No, no, you can't come in. I'll get the planning officer to clarify that point, you know, in our, our summing up. Okay, Neil, do you want to uh, further expand on what your answer was? The, like, I, I, I'm, my client does not maintain that piece of ground um, in terms of, like, cutting the grass. Um, it's, there's no physical, physical line, no physical boundary um, from what my client actually owns and what the, um, the, the surrounding area um, is owned and maintained by. Um, the grass in question is like part and parcel of that kind of like area, um, but the area is actually still owned by um, my client. It's a, it's a strange boundary, I agree, but um, that's why my client was looking to try and actually, you know, utilise the space that's um, that, that, that's in their mind not actually used. Okay, and I think uh, I think the landownership it's already in the report. It's it's not a relevant point. 
you know, in terms of the planning process. Members, any further questions? Councillor Mayor, do you have a follow up question? George? Nope. Okay. Nobody else? else? Okay. Right, Neil, I think that's you. I don't see any, any other hands raised. Thank Thanks you. for coming this morning. Okay, Fiona, I think we're over to you in terms of summing up eh, in regard to any any response you'd have for the points that were raised. Fiona. That's great. Thanks very much, Councillor Roberts. Um, just a couple of points to make. Um, in terms of the, the previous laundry, members will remember that this was an enforcement situation. We had a planning application that came in and attempt by the applicant at the time to address it. Um, it didn't get planning permission and then it was removed. Um, that would obviously be a separate issue. Um, there was ownership matters um, raised by the applicant's agent. Members are aware that they are not material planning considerations beyond the appropriate certification of an ownership certificate to us. Um, and let me just see. Uh, I'm afraid, Councillor Mayor, I don't actually know who owns it, um, who owns the area of open space. So I'm unfortunately I can't really give you much guidance in that respect. I could research the files if you're interested after committee and come back to you as a separate issue. But unfortunately, I couldn't clarify that for you today. Um, in terms of the town centres, um, our commitment in the local development plan in planning terms is um, is town centre first. And basically any retail proposals, class one shop should be directed to the town centre. And that's what the policies in TC2 and TC3 say. Anything, any proposals out with town centres um, would need to be justified. And that's what's called a sequential test. A sequential test is such that it's an evaluation and a survey of the town centre. We look at vacant properties. Are there vacant properties in the town centre where this, prop this proposal should be directed to or just can they discount vacant properties while they're not suitable? Then really what you would do is you would go to edge of centre and then only in suitable site, if suitable sites are not available, should you then go to out of centre sites. Um, I don't have the page number on me, if you just bear with me. It is all detailed in more detail in the LZ in the um, committee report. And if you if you it's paragraph 23, yes, sorry, Councillor, you did say that's page 13. And that's about footfall generating uses out with town centres. So a, a sequential test would have had to have been done for us to review this in more detail. Whether we would have arrived to the same conclusion, I can't say because we don't have a central sequential test in front of us. But obviously we don't have one. And as far as we are concerned at the moment, it is contrary to policy on that basis. So thank you. OK, thanks very much, Fiona. OK, members, it's over to yourself at this point. Do you have any points of clarification you would require of the officers prior to determination? Members? Councillor Cook, yeah. Councillor Cook, Tom. Thanks, Chair. I'm just looking for clarification on the sequential test. The, the applicant indicated that since he owned that land, it didn't you know didn't own any of the properties elsewhere then there's no need to do a sequential test i'm assuming that would be wrong it doesn't matter whether there are properties available or owned or not by the by the applicant it's still a requirement to do the sequential test uh yes councillor took there is still a requirement ownership is not a matter to it it's basically got to look at what about sites are available in the town center and why they're not suitable thank you, thank you. okay thanks tom OK, I'm not seeing any other hands raised. OK, members, can we move to determination? Um, can I have a proposal, please? OK. Um, Councillor Cook. Sorry, Tom, I didn't see your hand. Sorry, Chair, I was going to move the refusal for the reasons given in the officer's report. OK, thank you. Um, do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor, Jenkins, Councillor Jenkins, OK. Thanks, Gordon. Is, is anyone else otherwise minded? No, I'm not seeing any hands. OK, Lynn. Thank you, Chair. The decision of the committee is that the application has been refused for the reasons detailed in the report. Thank you. OK, thank you, Lynn. Um, the next item on the agenda is planning application number 210847PP. Application for planning permission for installation of timber panelling to front elevation in retrospect at 38 to 40 Main Street, New Mills, East Ayrshire, KA169DE, pages 31 to 
to 55 on your documentation. Fiona, you again. It is me again. Uh, thanks very much, Chair. The purpose of this report is to present an application for planning permission to be considered by the, the planning committee under the council scheme of delegation. It's a local development, but we have more than 10 objections and therefore it requires to be determined by planning committee. The application is not significantly contrary to the local development plan and therefore planning committee is the appropriate route for determination. The application site relates to retrospective works to the front elevation of two separate but adjoining properties at 38 to 40 Main Street in the Mills. Planning application has been submitted by the occupants of the upper floor of the building at number 40 and it functions as a residential flatty dwelling. The planning, a planning application was previously approved at this planning committee on the 8th of February 2019 for a change of use of shop to residential flat and associated external alterations at the ground floor of this building at number 38 and that was partly retrospective. The application site and property is located within the settlement boundary and within the town centre boundary of New Milnes as detailed in the local development plan and the application site is also within the New Milnes conservation area. Um, I would also refer members to the background dating at starting at paragraph 10 on page 32 and note that the application is in retrospect in part. In um, application is in retrospect. In addition to the approved works um, that have already taken under the previous application, six pent timber panels have been installed to the front elevation of the building to frame the fenestration and the door. The timber panels have been installed where parts of the shop front were intended to have a sandstone finish in order to tidy up the front elevation and these unauthorised works form the basis of this application. Proposed works refer to the installation of a light oak stradwood panels to the front elevation of the building and affect number 38 and 40 at this two storey building. For clarity and following dialogue with the applicant's agent, it's been confirmed that the left side and upper panels attached to number 40 and the right side panels attached to number 38 Main Street in legal terms. So just turning to the screens again, hopefully I'll manage to share my tree. OK, so here we have um, New Milnes as a settlement itself. You'll see that the red line site is just within here. Here we have the plans that have been submitted by the applicants. You'll see the property is referred to there, outlined in red. You'll see the former front elevation as it was prior to the consent previously being implemented. And you'll see the elevation here um, with the timber panels just surrounding the property there. It'll be more clearly shown when I show you the pictures, members, in a sec, and you'll be able to see that. Here's the local development plan map. So you can see the blue dotted line is the town centre boundary and the red line is the conservation area boundary. So this is an extract before the conversion works were undertaken, and that dates as a Google image, as you can see in the highlight, and that's from 2016. Here's the site here, members. There's the upstairs property, and here's the downstairs property at number 38. Here is works ongoing from the, the approved planning consent from 2018. And here is what we're here to look at today, members. You can see the panels that have been put um, around the frame of the building, and you can see that that is what we are here to look at today. Some general images of the street members. You can see the application site here. Where are you members? And you'll see obviously there's the residential flatty property above and here's the commercial unit just next door. Just a little bit more detail and close up members to you now. Um, that's the last slide there, members. That's just a bit of a close up detail. So I'll go back. Stop sharing. If anybody wants me to refer back to anything, please don't hesitate to let me know. In terms of consultation responses, we have a recommendation from the Development Planning CARS team project regeneration team that the application be refused on the basis that the works are totally inappropriate to the conservation area and we have no consultation response from the Community Council. 
We have 22 individual representations objecting to the application that have been received, and there are 23 letters of support or letters neutral to the proposal. All points are summarised in the report starting at page 33. The objections raise a range of issues and focus on the inappropriate design and finish of the panels within the conservation area for a residential property, the scale and detailing of the works being an eyesore, and the negative effect on the town centre's appearance. The letters of support refer to the upgrading works having made a difference to the previous look of the property, the work being beneficial to neighbours and the appearance, and the wood panelling being complementary to the shops on Main Street. A further letter of support has been submitted by the developer responsible for the panels at page 35 of your report relative to the reasons for the work and how the developer believes that the property still has a commercial status. This is not something that we would agree with, noting the previous change of use from application from a shop to a flat that had been implemented on site. All points raised by the developer are fully responded to in the report. Sections 25 and 37 two of the Town and Country Planning Scotland Act 97 as amended require that planning applications be determined in accordance with the development plan unless material considerations indicate otherwise. In this instance, the, the adopted East Ayrshire Local Development Plan is a relevant policy document. The retrospective proposal for the in installation of the timber panelling is considered to be contrary to the East Ayrshire Local Development Plan policies OP1 and, and in specifically in terms of OP1 parts 1, 3 and 5, policy ENV1 and policy ENV3. It is further discouraged by the key aims of the spatial strategy to promote high quality sustainable development, ensuring that development is of the highest quality design. The development does not contribute positively to the area, making the area concerned a successful place. The elevation does not enhance the character and amenity of the area and does not protect and enhance the built heritage designations. Whilst an explanation of the requirement for the report the retrospective works has been provided, this attempt to address the matter isn't satisfactory and there are no material considerations in the, afford in the aforementioned representation to suggest an approval of these retrospective works. The application is contrary to policies ENV1 and ENV3 of the Local Development Plan, which re relate to listed buildings and conservation areas. With regards to the material considerations, the representations do raise valid material considerations that would support a recommendation of refusal. There are no points raised in the supporting letter that would support the granting of, of permission in this respect. With regards to the impact on the visual and residential amenity of the area, the panelling in the building front, frontage is considered to be unsympathetic and incompatible with the location, and its general design arrangement and presence significantly detracts from the building. The importance of protecting the character and appearance of conservation areas and setting of listed buildings is set out in Scottish planning policy, with the significance of setting being carried through to historic environment policy, both of which are significant material considerations and both of those support refusal of the works. The presumption in favour of development that contributes to sustainable development from SPP carries no weight as this is not considered to be sustainable development and adverse impacts will consider significantly and demonstrably outweigh any benefits it may have. Therefore, we're recommending refusal of the application for the reasons stated in Appendix 1 of your report on page 53 of your papers. Back to yourself, Chair. OK, thanks very much for your report, Fiona. OK, members, there's no hearing this morning, so it's over to yourself uh, in regard to any clarification you require from the planning, the planning officer. Um, as you can see, um, you know, the likes of it as a conservation area in the building is listed. There are 22 objections, but 23 letters of support. And in paragraphs 10 and paragraph 11, um, it's highlighting the works were not completed as per the approved drawings, um, where sandstone should have been used instead of timber. Members, I'll pass over to yourselves. Any questions or clarification from the planning officer? No, none. Nobody? OK, members, it's over to yourself for determination. Do I have a proposal? OK, on the basis of... Uh, sorry, I've got a, a hand up. Councillor Mayor, George. Thanks, Chair. Uh, we're going to move refusal on the, the grounds based on the planner's report, sorry. OK, thanks very much. Um, do you have a seconder? I'll second that, Chair. OK, who was first up? Councillor Cook, I believe, Chair. Councillor Cook. Tom, you going to second that? I was going to second that, yes. Exactly. OK, thanks very much. So, proposal from Councillor Mayor, seconded by Councillor Cook. Is anyone otherwise minded? Nope. Lynn? 
Thank you, Chair. The decision of the committee is that the application has been refused for the reasons detailed in the report. Thank you. OK, thanks, Lynn. OK, on to the next item. Is planning application number 210864PP. Application for planning permission for the change of use from builder's yard to commercial mm -hmm. kennels for the breeding of dogs at the stables, Brown Street, Green Home, New Mullins East Ayrshire, pages 56 through 78. Fiona. Thank you, Chair. Um, purpose of this report is to present planning application to be considered by planning committee under the scheme of delegation. It's a local development with more than 10 objections and requires to be determined at planning committee. The development is significantly contrary to the local development plan of 2017, but planning committee is the appropriate route. The application site falls within the new mill settlement boundary and within the development opportunity site reference 348B, which is allocated for business and industrial purposes in the local development plan. Complaints were received by the planning service in November 21 regarding alleged dog breeding taking place at the site. Following an investigation by the planning enforcement officer, the current application has been received. The application form states that the applicant was unaware that planning permission was required. The application is retrospective in part at the moment and it's to develop kennels for the breeding, commercial breeding of dogs within the site at Brown Street and the Mills. It was most recently used as a builder's yard. This constitutes a change of use from class 6 storage to a sui generis use, which effectively means in a class of its own, i.e. or not falling within a particular use class under the Town and Country Planning Use Classes Order of 97. Further details are outlined in paragraph 10 of your report. If you can bear with me, I'll run through a few slides for you as well now. OK, hopefully you can all see that. OK, again, we're, we're staying in New Milnes for this one, members. As you can see, we're slightly further along the road. We're down at Brown Street here now, members, and you can see the red circle and the red line site there. This is a little location plan just showing you the site itself, members. Um, you can see that the access there of, of Brown Street there, and you can see the site in there. And you can see some factories and works round about members um, and industrial type of buildings. You can also see just across the River Irvine, we've referred to in the report, this is Queen's Crescent, which is the nearest residential properties uh, to the proposal just across the river bank, the river there. Uh, we have a layout here, members. Um, there's an existing storage shed. There's a holding, a building there to be removed. There's an existing house. There's car parking areas. Um, there's various, well, this is just the site layout, members, and existing toilets and, and other various storage buildings there. We get to this now, members, and this is the actual um, proposed layout. Um, I'm just looking down. We've got kennels, basically, throughout the site, members. Um, do you with me? I'm just trying to zoom in if I can, members. So you've got runs and kennels, etc., just scattered, just basically throughout the site. On this side of the boundary, you've got kennels, you've got more runs here, members, etc., and you've got um, sort of young kennels for the young puppies just right over beside the existing house, and you've got the refuse storage area at the back there, members. So just some details of kennels and buildings for you, members. There, there's some elevations for kennels. More elevations for you in layout members. Uh, this is just the um, local development plan uh, map that goes with LDP1, and that just shows you the location of the site is within the, the purple area there, members, and that is the area that is safeguarded for um, industrial and business purposes in the local development plan. Here's the entrance into the site. Just the road members there looking back towards, um, going back into the town centre of, of um, New Mills. Various aspects throughout the site with some of the kennels and 
small areas of outside space. Okay, turning back to the report, we have no objections from contaminated land and environmental health. We have um, no objections from ARA roads, ARA flooding and Scottish water. The most significant consultation response is in paragraph 14, and that's from the, contaminated, the environmental health service who do provide detailed comments and who are also present today. Environmental health in particular seeks certain information, and the most critical to that is a noise impact assessment. This has not been submitted and without the supporting information, environmental health would offer their objections. A noise impact assessment members is required to allow the amenity impacts to be fully assessed, albeit the service does have concerns regarding the principle of this type of use in a built up area in terms of the impact on amenity of the area and residential properties in particular. Section 25 and 37 two members, as I've said before, of the Town and Country Planning Act require planning applications to be determined in accordance with the development plan unless material considerations indicate otherwise. In terms of the adopted East Ayrshire local plan, this is the most relevant document from 2017. The proposal to change the use from a builder's yard to commercial kennels for the breeding of dogs is considered to be contrary to policies OP1, parts 1 and 2, IND2, Res 11 and, Re and ENV12 as stated in the report. In this regard, the proposal would be incompatible and an inappropriate use within an allocated industrial site. As a consequence, with the loss of available employment land for these uses, for business uses and industrial uses, such that the development would post development would entail and would not comply with the IND2. Also, is critically contrary to policy Res 11, as the applicant has failed to demonstrate there would be no adverse impact in the amenities surrounding residential area. The site boundary is approximately 25 metres from the rear garden boundary of the nearest residential property in Queen's Crescent. In the consultation response from the Environmental Health Service, they've stated that they require a noise impact assessment. They would object, Environmental Health have advised they would object should an NIA not be submitted to allow this assessment. No such noise impact assessment has been received and the impact of the amenity of the area cannot be fully assessed. This requires to be undertaken prior to the determination of the application as it is not appropriate to condition a noise impact assessment as this matter is too integral to the assessment of the planning application and its acceptability otherwise. The Planning Conservice does, as I've said, have con some concerns at the principle of this type of use in a built up area and its compatibility with surrounding uses. Proposal is contrary to ENV 12, given in relation to noise, as there has been no noise assessment, and it is the applicant's responsibility to uh, ensure that it's appropriate supporting information is submitted with an application. The material considerations do not support approval of the applications and the representations are valid material planning considerations to support refusal. We therefore recommend refusal of the applications for the reasons stated in Appendix 1 of your report on page 75 of your papers. Back to yourself, Chair. OK, thanks very much for your report, Fiona. OK, members, there is, uh, there's no hearing today. Um, Fiona has made reference to environmental health. It may be useful to hear from the Environmental Health Officer, uh, Bill Gilchrist, before handing back to yourself. Bill. Thank you very much, Chair. First, the apologies uh, to members that the case officer dealing with us is unable to attend today for personal reasons. In considering this application, the environmental health officer looked at the nature of the development and the surrounding environment and was concerned about un, um, unacceptable noise impacts from the from the development, particularly in terms of dog barking and commercial premises. We know do give rise to complaints uh, of uh, excessive noise. And within that last few weeks, we have had a number of complaints relating to dog barking from these particular premises. The purpose of the assessment is to identify if un uh, unacceptable noise impacts are likely to occur and to give the applicant the opportunity to implement a range of mitigation measures which would reduce any noise impacts to an acceptable level. As the planning officer has stated, no such Im noise impact assessment has been provided and accordingly we are unable to give a definitive answer in, in terms of our objection and until such times as a noise impact assessment is provided and we have assessed it, 
we would wish to maintain our objection. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much for that, Bill. Members, it's over to yourself in regard to any points of clarification you may require, either from the planning officer or the environmental health officer. Members, any questions? Councillor Mayor, George. Thanks, Chair. I, I'm really concerned that this, these premises have already got a dog breeder's license. We seem to be tying ourselves up in knots between the licensing section and the planning department. And now that they're both under the auspices of uh, David Mitchell, I think it's time that we got something sorted out here. We have had planning applica planning applications in the past where, no, sorry, we've been involved in breeders licenses before where people want to object. And in terms of the the, the legislation covering the, the breeding of dogs and the licensing of kennels, there's no real scope for people to object to it. The, the objection should be raised, I think, at the planning stage. Uh, I, th I think it's, it's something's new really needing to be done about this. You can understand the applicant here, he's applied for a kennel, he's applied for a license to have kennels and he's got his license. And then suddenly it seems to, nobody told him that he needed planning permission because it is, it does not, he didn't realize that he needed planning permission. Now, considering that it's, it's one council, and in fact, it's now one department, as I say, since the, the recent change to the, the planning uh, section, I think this is something that uh, we as a council really need to get sorted out. I don't know if uh, we've got legal representation this morning, but I, I'd like to hear uh, the legal picture, if that's possible. Thank you. I think you, make, I think you make a fair and relevant point. We do have uh, legal representation here. It's maybe something that needs to look at going forward, but uh, when you've got different types of legislation involved, it might not be so easy, but uh, Craig, do you want to make some comments in regard to what Councillor Mayor was advocating there? <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, what I would say is, yes, uh, I appreciate the point you're making, Councillor Mayor, and certainly since September last year, uh, when the uh, development management um, uh, section of the planning service moved to governance services, we are under, you know, the one uh, head of service uh, now, and it is something that um, we can certainly look at, and I will have a discussion uh, with David Mitchell. Um, I know that David was hoping to be at the planning committee today, but uh, my understanding is he's not yet um, uh, joined us. That said, Councillor Mayor, I think one of the difficulties clearly here is the fact that there are two statutory uh, legislative uh, regimes in place here, um, and that clearly um, the two are totally separate, distinct, and have different considerations um, you, that, that, that come into play. Um, and therefore, merely the fact that one um, has uh, been dealt with um, through the, the licensing regime doesn't automatically uh, mean that um, the planning one follows, given the totally separate and distinct considerations. Um, you know, uh, to be fair as well, I, as I say, we were, it is something that we, we can certainly look at in terms of the, the, the ongoing relationship between the licensing and the, the planning sections. I'm not sure uh, at this stage what prompted, as you'll see this as a part retrospective application, what prompted the enforcement notice, uh, so the enforcement complaint um, to come in um, and whether it was part of that process, but it's something that certainly uh, we can look at. But for the avoidance of doubt, in any event, clearly we are dealing with the uh, planning application this morning uh, on its individual planning merits, irrespective of what may have gone on before. OK, thanks, Craig. Um, George, I think you make a fair point, and uh, I think with what Craig's saying, it's something that does need to be looked at going forward. Um, do you have any further points you'd wish to raise in terms of the application? No, not oh, really, Chair. Chair. Okay, th thanks I, very much. I do realise that it's a separate issue, <laughs> but they should be linked. Uh, although they're separate issues, they, they should be linked, I think. Thank you. 
Okay, thanks, George. Councillor Jenkins. Uh, Councillor Jenkins, Gordon. Th thank you, Chair. I, I suppose it's just a bit of clarification here. I mean, it, it seems to be one of the main points that's being made is that we don't have this uh, noise survey. And uh, what, uh, we do have a recommendation for refusal, but I just wonder if, if uh, and how it would fit in if we were to say that uh, we don't actually have enough information to make a decision this morning because we don't have this noise survey uh, and we should ask for that before we actually make a, a final decision here. I do realise there are other grounds that officers have, have cited for refusal, but uh, given the importance of that one, I just wonder uh, some advice from uh, officers as to, to where that stands. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Gordon. Fiona, do you want to take that one? Thank you, Chair. Um, it, it, just in reply to yourself, Councillor Jenkins, um, there are an awful lot, there, there are four reasons for refusal, one of which is relating to residential amenity. I think whilst we don't have a noise impact assessment, I think, as I said to you in the report, we still have concerns about a non, this, this type of use and its compatibility other than that. So I think we are fine to make a decision in terms of resi living and res amenity and without the noise assessment, because we do have overriding concerns about the acceptability of the principle of this use here as well. Okay, Gordon, so it's not just the aspect of noise uh, in terms of the consideration. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, members, anybody else? No, nope, I'm not seeing anybody. Okay, members, can we move to determination, please? Do I see a proposal? Okay, I will move refusal on the grounds of the officers' reports. Seconder. I will second that. Okay, yeah. Councillor McFadgen. Okay, is there anyone otherwise minded? No, I'm not seeing anybody else. Lynn? Thank you, Chair. The decision of the committee is that the application has been refused for the reasons detailed in the report. Okay, thanks, Lynn. Um, the next item is uh, item six, compliance monitoring update of major environmental developments in East Ayrshire, pages 79 through 116. Barry, yourself. Thanks, Chair. Um, <clears throat> the purpose of this report is to update the Planning Committee on the monitoring of major environmental projects in East Ayrshire. Uh, over the period from 1st of January 2022 to 31st of March 22. So starting with the uh, open cast coal sites, um, these are all summarised within the report and the appendices, uh, which give more detail. Uh, but just to give a summary, um, relating to open cast coal sites at Greenburn, um, no further restoration works have taken place. Uh, however, aftercare works have been ongoing at Well Hill and Ockham Cross with tree and hedgerow, hedgerow planting taking place. Uh, House of Water, the water rebound monitoring has been ongoing and the void, uh, with, at the void uh, with the level in March records it's slightly above the anticipated level. Uh, paragraph 10 of the report notes that the Craigman burn was made live on a trial basis. Uh, this is a burn which was diverted as part of the cooling operations and water is now being allowed to flow through it. Some of the water went below ground due to the conditions of the clay material which is used for the bed of the burn. Uh, however, this has been rectified. Um, this is also a matter which is regulated by SEPA. Uh, all of the open cast restoration projects are now completed with the exception of further restoration works at Chalmerston, which are planned to take place following the completion of the North Kyle Wind Farm, which is ongoing or, or will be ongoing within that area. The completion of these projects was reported to full council on the 31st of March 2022. Aftercare works are ongoing at Pofarno and Grieve Hill SPA area, and these will continue to be overseen by the Pofarno uh, Management Committee, which will be chaired by East Ayrshire Council. The land is in the process of being sold by MRL to three separate buyers who will become members of the PMC and will be required to manage land in accordance with the aftercare plan which is being secured through a legal agreement. Uh, and this legal agreement is likely to be signed by all parties either this week, uh, by today, or early next week. Uh, just an update on Duncan Newman as well. Uh, restoration operations, uh, which are, are limited, 
um, have been concluded as approved uh, by the committee back in 2013. Um, it is anticipated that Hargreaves will also remove the concrete structure which was used to load coal onto the conveyor belt and infill uh, an underpass in the a public road. Um, it's anticipated this will happen within the next couple of months. Uh, moving on to wind farms, uh, South Kyle, um, the delivery of turbines was programmed for this month uh, and all, all of the off-site road improvement works have now been completed. Compliance has generally been acceptable with areas of good practice noted. Uh, paragraph 19 of the report notes, notes that uh, uh, notes peat spalling off steep road batters this is uh, an issue at part, only at part of Spur 15 and is being monitored and it's not got any worse uh, since it first occurred. Uh, the geotechnical specialist and contractor are currently considering mitigation uh, as, as was also reported in the last compliance report. This may involve works to reduce the gradient of the slope, um, which would be fairly major works. Um, so this is not an area where enforcement action would be considered uh, due to it being restricted to a very small area of the overall site uh, and also the spalling has not got any worse since it first happened. Uh, we know that the developer is considering options to mitigate for this and is keen to ensure that they get it right first time rather than do a patch up job um, and then have to go in again later. So this is why it appears to be taking some time for a mitigation strategy to actually come to fruition. Uh, moving on to White Lee, paragraph 20 notes that officers have successfully reached out to the operator regarding the advisory restoration guarantee and expect to open detailed discussions in the next quarter. Uh, Sneddon Law works, are, works commenced formally on the 22nd of October, but meaningful, me, meaningful construction in the form of an access commenced in this quarter. And uh, South West Scotland Interconnector uh, restoration works have continued with, with no particular issues of note. Uh, at landfill sites uh, at Gerlaf, uh, a current application to extend the lifetime of the Gerlaf landfill site has been stalled pending bar, but who is the applicant considering the restoration plans and financial guarantee and the outcome of a ta tax appeal case. The site has been mothballed in the meantime with environmental monitoring ongoing. The site currently has a £1 million bond, which was renewed, renewed in November last year. Moving on to some photos. Um, bear with me. OK, so... Uh, Greenburn, um, this is showing the Dilgig Void. Uh, House of Water, um, this is showing some of the rebound water which has um, appeared in areas close to the River Nith. Uh, and this is being um, um, diverted through ditches uh, into vegetation before entering into the, the Nith. Uh, this is a House of Water Void where the rebound levels are also being monitored. And this is Gallifrey and Grieve Hill. I think some slides have previously been shown of this uh, for the completion report, but um, we'll just run through them quickly anyway. Um, showing the before and after images. Uh, so this is May 2020. Afterwards, uh, October 2021. And Gallifrey and Pete Sale uh, in January 20, 2017. And after and a workshop area in 2013 and after. Uh, Grieve Hill Void in 2017 and after in September last year. Uh, moving on to South Kyle, uh, just to run through some slides really quickly, um, just showing brash storage within Borough Pit 2 as explained in the, the slide title. I'll just run through them without much explanation. Um, this is one of the areas that was noted in the report where wet peat was placed onto 
uh, one of the, the road batters. Um, this was just a one-off issue. Um, it's fairly minor and the developer is aware that this is not meant to happen. They shouldn't be placing wet peat because it has a tendency to slide off. Um, so that's we're, we're happy that's being rectified as it should be. Um, this is the area I referred to previously at SPAR 15, where there are some stability issues and the mitigation uh, proposals are, are currently being um, uh, put into place. Well, not put into place, but being considered at the moment and will be put into place, hopefully, in the not too distant future. And moving on to South West Scotland Renewable Connections Project. Again, I'll just run through these slides and you can see the description in the title. That concludes that. Um, so the recommendation in the report is at paragraph two, um, and this includes uh, that no formal enforcement action has been undertaken or warranted at any of the ongoing sites. Um, so that's all from me. Thanks, Chair. Thanks very much for that report, Barry. Uh, members, do you have any, any questions for Barry in, in regard to our report? Councillor Cook, Tom. Thanks, Chair. Yeah. No, a good report and pleased to see a huge amount of work that's been done from where we started and, and all of these restorations on, on the, the open cast. It's just a question though around Whiteley uh, Wind Farm. Are we saying in there that the bond we have at present isn't adequate to cover uh, the cost of, of removal or are we saying we don't know that the, that the, the bond, whether the bond is adequate or not? Can you just clarify that? Thing? So yourself, Chair. Thanks. Um, I'll answer that, Councillor Cook. Um, it's we have a substantial bond in place, um, and it was evaluated by our independent um, experts, um, and we are expecting that to be uh, topped up. So, at the moment, it is less um, than the, the total restoration value. Um, this has been ongoing for quite a long time. Actually, that estimation probably needs a refresh now, um, and as uh, noted in the report, there, um, trying to get the three councils to agree along with the developer has just taken a long time. Um, so we're hopeful that we can push this on fairly quick. But, but the, the answer to your question is it probably is at the moment less than, than what it needs to be. But there is still a substantial bond in place. It's a 25 year bond. So there's monies to call on. And we're obviously keen to, to get that rectified and bring it up to date as soon as possible. No, thanks. Uh, I think it is important that we keep that going to make sure that we are properly covered. Going, going back in time, I think we know the issues that can arise. No, fair point, Tom. Lessons learned for the past. Members, anybody else? No, just a couple of points for me, um, Vary. Uh, paragraph 19, uh, the restoration of the, the steep road battles. You've covered that. I mean, it's obviously one we need to keep an eye on. Uh, I don't think there's any point. Uh, uh, you know, putting a procedure in place, you know, i.e. the battle's covered with peat and then it slides off. So, but you've covered that. Um, I think the other one is Dan Connor. Um, do you maybe want to say a couple of paragraphs about Dan Connor? Uh, where we are with that? In relation to the landfill, or the legal landfill site, um, I don't know whether Craig might want to come in as well, but. Um, there is an uh, appeal at the moment, which has been was assisted by the Scottish Government. I understand that that might now have been unsisted, uh, but we haven't had any further instruction in relation to that. So we're just awaiting something more from the Scottish Government. But Craig, I think, might want to come in. Thanks, Larry. Craig? Thank you, Chair. Um, the, <clears throat> the position here is, as you remember, 
um, a few years ago now, um, enforcement notice. Uh, uh, enforcement notices were served. They were appealed by um, uh, uh, two of the, the, the local landowners. Um, uh, and as a consequence, um, shortly thereafter, the matter uh, went to the, the, the DPEA uh, with a reporter being appointed. However, um, the, the appeals themselves were, were assisted um, at uh, SEPA's um, given SEPA's involvement in this um, and given um, the potential um, for um, criminal investigations or, or prosecutions in relation to the, 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 the activity that had gone on on the, on the site. The position at the moment is that um, we are currently clarifying with the, the, the DPA whether or not the report is now uh, in a position to move the appeals forward. The main reason being that certainly um, my recollection is uh, last month um, uh, the reporter was written to um, by all parties um, to the appeal to express their view in matters. From our perspective, we did indicate initially that we were looking for this matter to uh, move forward. Um, however, uh, we are aware that uh, that position may not be the position that SEPA uh, have indicated and therefore we have sought clarification from the reporter as to whether or not it is, uh, his, his position is that the, the appeals should remain um, assisted or not. Notwithstanding that, I'm aware obviously that there are um, some water courses up there. My understanding is that uh, SEPA continue to monitor them meantime to ensure that uh, there is nothing untoward uh, that, that could potentially um, affect those water courses um, in terms of their um, role and, and remit meantime anyway. So there is monitoring taking place at that location. OK, thanks for that, that update, Craig. That's, that's very useful. OK, members, I'm not seeing any further hands. Um, the recommendations are there for you. They're all for noting. Um, are you happy to note in the context of this report? Okay, thanks very much, members. Um, and last on the agenda is uh, the update report and progress of planning applications which have been recommended for approval, which are subject to the conclusion of an appropriate legal agreement and or legacy planning applications. And these stairs your pages 117 through 126. David. Okay, thanks, Chair. Um, the purpose of this report is just to update members um, on plan applications which have been recommended for approval subject to a legal agreement um, and also any legacy applications that are one year from the date of validation. Um, this uh, report covers the period January to March 2022 inclusive. Um, there are two tables um, at the back of the report which detail each of the individual applications um, with an overview in the report. Um, the key points um, from the report itself um, just noting from Table 1 that there are seven uh, planning applications um, that have been approved by committee or a delegated officer uh, subject to the conclusion of a legal agreement and they have not been concluded yet. Um, that's two fewer uh, than the last reporting period and no new applications have been added to that. Um, the table details um, that six of the seven uh, applications are over the six months since consideration, um, but they are progressing well in a positive manner. Um, with the recommendations that we continue on um, those processes to try and reach conclusion. Um, the exception is one application is currently on hold at the request of the applicant um, and officers are agreeable to that. And that's in relation to the Gurlaf site. Um, turning now to legacy applications, that's table two. Um, these, as I said, relate to any applications that have been in for more than a year since validation. Um, the table states that there are 13 uh, legacy applications currently under consideration. Um, that's three less than the previous reporting period. Um, for clarity, the last reporting in this reporting period, we've cleared four legacy cases, but one new case has come on. Um, the recommendation um, for them is that we continue on um, trying to, to deal with those applications, um, albeit obviously one uh, has got a temporary hold on it, which is in, in relation to the legal agreement side as well. Um, approximately half of the legacy applications um, are due to not concluding the legal agreement yet. So they have been um, considered, a recommendation has been made on them and we're just waiting to conclude the legal agreement. So um, generally um, there's decent progress on them all. So um, the, 
details are all there and happy to take any questions and back to yourself, Chair. OK, thanks very much for that, David. Members, any questions on David's report? No, nope, I'm not seeing any hands. Um, OK, the, uh, the recommendations are there before you. There are three recommendations, all for noting. Are you happy to... Sorry, I see that hand up. No. no. Uh, OK, so you get three recommendations in front of you on page 117. Uh, and you have to agree the recommendations. They're itemised for noting. OK, members. OK, so that concludes today's business. Uh, Robert, you want to switch the microphones off, please, the recording? So that's conclusion of business. Sorry. Okay, IT, if you're listening in, can you switch off the recording, please?